Now that we have very easily set upload care up and we have our widget in place, we can start to process image uploads. So let's focus on that first and then we'll go and style up the widget just to make it look a little bit nicer. So really what we want then is to be able to upload an image and then we want to see an upload button to confirm. So by default, the behavior that we'll see when we upload an image with upload care, we can either drag a file in or click the button and we'll see the following. So remember we set cropping to free cropping so I can crop this however I like. I hit done and then I just see the following. So what we want is some kind of upload button to allow us to then click upload and actually process this on the back end. So to do this, we will first of all need to modify this so this is wrapped in a form because obviously we want to send this off to the back end eventually. So the form action then is going to be just a hash for now. We'll leave this as a hash and then we'll hook it up to a new route in just a moment. And of course we want this just within our form. Now, if you're not too sure what this produces, if we go ahead and inspect this, you can see that what we get is a uh, div with a class of upload care widget. This is how we're going to be able to start the actual button. We have an input type just here of hidden. Now, if we just view the page source, you'll see that all we get is an input type. We have a role here. We have the name, which we can pick up on the back end. And we obviously have some data attributes uh, just here as well. So it's pretty straightforward the way that this works. Now, what we want then as part of this is a separate button which will initially be hidden and then it will be enabled when we actually upload an image. So let's create a button just here and we'll give this a type of submit. So this will go ahead and submit our form. And inside of here, we will write upload. So we have now a button just here. Now we only want this to display once we've uploaded an image. And this is where our styles start to come in. So we'll start to style this out. I'm gonna create a single style sheet. Of course, if you're working with SAS or less, you can go ahead and compile into this. But for now, we'll just create an app.css file and we'll write all of our styles just out in here. Okay, so to start with then, we want to style our button just within our form. So let's create an upload form style and we'll go ahead and set the text align to center. That will just uh, form part of our styling. And what we're going to do is create an upload form button. So if you're wondering what these underscores are, I'm using the BEM uh, methodology of CSS where we have uh, basically a block here and then we have an element within that block. So our block is our upload form. So in here then we want to set the display to none on that button. So if we head over to home and we give this a class of upload form, so upload form, and then this button here will give a class of upload form button. And just while I'm at this, I'm gonna set the method here to post just so we don't forget. So obviously we need to pull our style sheet in so we can go and do this over in our app.twig file. So if we come down to about here and create a link element, we have our href in here. Now we need to set this as an absolute path. So what we can do is we can say app.request, grab the base URL, and then in here we can say CSS app.css. This will mean that we'll grab the base URL and we'll definitely load in our styles. So you can see that they've already taken effect. And if you take a look at the head of your document, you can see that we have that href just in there. Okay, so now that we've got this done then, once we have uploaded an image, e.g. we've either dragged it in or selected one, we want to be able to show that button. So how do we do this? Well, we have event handlers within Upload Care that we can control. So what we want to do is just head over to our templates here and just down here, we want to include a new block. And this will be uh, specifically for any script that we want to load in individually on each page. So all this means is that now over on home, what we can do is create a new block down here called scripts. And we can specifically write out any scripts we want just for this page. Now, what we want to do is say widget is an upload care single widget. 
And in here we want to pass in the selector. And of course here we'll need some script tags as well. So let's just add these in just here. So for the selector then, this is literally just going to be an element with a role of upload care uploader. Remember we saw that earlier when we went ahead and viewed the page source, we have this input here with the role of upload care uploader. So essentially this widget now represents the widget that we have on our page. So to do this, we can say something like widget on upload complete. And in here we can pass in a callback to be run when this is complete. So to test this out, we can do a console log uploaded and we can just test that this works. So over here then, if we just correct this end block over in here, so end block, we can now see that when we drag this over, hit done, you can see that over here, we now see uploaded just in the console. So pretty cool. And that means that when we do upload an image, we can show our button. So we can say document query selector. And in here we can say upload form button. And we can say dot style equals display inline block. So we're just modifying the styles of this element. Pretty straightforward. So now that we have this done, we can go and check this out, drag an image in, hit done. When that's finished, we now see that button. We can click this button and we go through and uh, obviously store our image. Obviously at the moment we see an error because uh, we're not actually posting anywhere useful. So that's the basics of our button. Let's tackle then the upload process so we can get this into here and then we'll make this look a little bit prettier. So what we need to do is head over to index. We need to set up a new route. So in this case, it's going to be something like app post upload. We have our callback as usual, and we can use app in here. So it's in scope and we can do anything we like with that. And all we need to do in here then is first of all, generate that hash and then actually just upload the image. So what we need to do is be able to pull in a particular request, so or a request item, and that is the file ID. If we go over to here, we know that this is called file ID, so we need to pick this up somehow within here. So just at the top here, I'm going to use Symfony component HTTP foundation request. And now with request, I can pull this just in here. And if we just test this out, we can do a var dump on request. And we need to somehow hook up to this. So we want to give this a name. And to do this, we say bind image.upload. So this is literally just the name of this route. And we can go ahead and add a forward slash there if we want. So now we need to be able to over in home say this is where I want to post this through to. So to do this, we need to uh, use another service provider. This is the URL generator service provider, and this will allow us to generate a full URL to that new route within this form. So just over on index.php, and this is the last provider that we are going to register. We just want to say register new Silex provider, and this is the URL generator service provider. And what we should now be able to do is over in here, over in our home.twig, we should be able to uh, grab this. So to do this, we just say URL, and then we give the name of the route, that's image.upload, so down here. So now when I refresh, this of course should be provider, like so. And we see that we get an error here, and that's because we need another dependency pulled in, uh, which is our twig bridge. So let's just quickly pull this in now, and then we should be good to go. So it's symphony and twig bridge if you want to include this. So we should now see that that will generate a URL 
to that route. So you can see here public upload. We know that the method is post. And because we already have our route pretty much set up ready to go, if we just come down to it, we're just doing a var dump on our request. So we can see what this is all about. So now if we just choose an image, so let's just go and drop, drop this in here and hit upload, you can see that we get this uh, request object back. Now from this, we can extract the data that we get back from upload care. So this is pretty straightforward. And now we're just going to go through the process of storing this and then we will start to star this out. So the first thing that we want to do is check if the file uh, exists or not. Now to actually grab the file, we can do request get file ID. So let's just take a look at this really quickly now. So let's pull an image in, hit done, hit upload. And you can see here that we get this string just here. So don't worry about this too much at the moment is because we uh, haven't returned a response. But this is essentially what we're going to be storing within the URL part of our database. OK, so we want to check if this is null. So to do this, we can just create a basic if statement here. And we're going to say if request get file ID is null, then what do we want to do? Well, it really depends. But we can go and redirect because we really don't want to process this. So we just do a return on app redirect. And then we can use app to grab our URL generator that we have pulled in. And we can generate a link to the home page. Now, of course, we haven't named this yet. So we can go and bind in home. So basically, if no file exists and we're trying to submit this form, we want to go ahead and redirect home. Now to test this, what we can do is just get rid of this display of none, refresh, hit upload, and you can see that we're not redirected. So what it might need to happen, or what we might need to happen is we might need to check that this is uh, an empty string maybe. In fact, we can test this by just grabbing this, doing a var dump on it and killing the page here. And let's try and submit this without anything in. So we can take our stars back to showing this button, hitting upload, and yeah, we just get an empty string. So we know that if we, well, we can get this to display again, we know that we now want to check it for an empty string and redirect otherwise. So now when we hit upload, you can see that we are just simply redirected back to this page. We're not actually processing anything at all. So it's really important that we think about these kind of things because we don't want to store uh, in a completely empty file ID. We'll you know, end up getting into all sorts of trouble. So now that that's done, then let's just uh, go and put back our display of none on our buttons. We don't want that to display. And we can start to store this now. So to actually grab the file, we want to say app upload care get file. Now the widget will have already uploaded this to upload care. So all we want to do is say request get file ID. Now, if you don't have automatic uploads turned on and you can find this over in your dashboard over in awesome image, and you can see that we've already uploaded a few files just here. What you can actually do is disallow automatic file storing. Now, if you do want to disallow this for any reason, what you want to do is then say file store. But otherwise, just doing this to grab the file if we need to use it at all is enough. We don't need to do anything else. So now that we have this done, what we can do is just store this in the database. So to store this, I'm just going to create a variable called store, and this is going to be app DB. And we want to create a prepared statement, obviously, because we're inserting data that's potentially from a user. I'm just going to pull this down and start to create my query. So I'm going to insert into the images table. I want to insert the hash, the URL, and the created at date. And the values that I want to insert, and of course, these are going to be placeholders. So it's going to be a hash, a URL, and the MySQL now function to go ahead and store that. 
And now I can execute this query. So I can just say store execute. Now the hash we're going to be generating using the random bytes function within PHP 7. Now if you're not using PHP 7, you can go ahead and use any other method here. There's loads of different ways you can do this. Uh, but of course this is uh, needs to be converted over. So we're gonna use the uh, binary to hex function to do that. And that will just generate us a 20 character hash. And now for the URL, we use the file that we've grabbed from upload care and we say get URL like so. So uh, we don't necessarily need to do this, but if you do want to do anything else with this, then it's uh, nice to have this here. So now that we have uh, created this record in our database, we want to redirect back to the homepage. So let's return app redirect. We want to redirect to app using our URL generator. And we want to generate a URL to the homepage. So we check if we actually have a file that has been uploaded and selected. We grab this file from upload care. We store it in our database along with a hash. And then we go ahead and redirect back to the homepage. And that is it for the file upload process. As simple as that. So let's test this out then. So I'm going to go ahead and drag an image over. I'm going to crop this just a little bit just so we can see how this looks. I'm going to hit done. I'm going to hit upload. And now we're redirected back over in the database. You can see that we've stored not only our hash, but our URL to our image. Now, if you can see these properties just here, these are all of the cropping data on the content delivery network for upload care. So if I were to go and say, duplicate this tab, paste this URL in, you can see that that is the cropped image. Now this is in fact an original image just processed on their content delivery network. So if I were to get rid of that, you can see that I get the original image. Now we'll look at how we can manipulate this later when we actually grab images back. But for now, we've uploaded an image with upload care or technically really just stored the URL, which we can use to display later on. And of course, that's exactly what we're going to be doing when we output these on the home page. So just to finish up, then we are going to style this up. So the first thing we want to do is head over to app.css and start to create uh, some more styles around this. So what we can first of all do is just set our container to have a width of 100%. So we'll do a little bit more setup here and then we'll be ready to go. And I'm going to place this just at the top. Now, what I also want to do is pull a fairly nice font in. So this looks a little bit better in terms of the button. So I'm going to be using Google fonts to do this. And I'm going to be using the railway font. Of course, you can choose whatever you want. Now we're going to go ahead and use this. So I'm going to select normal 400. And I'm going to go down and pull in this uh, style sheet just here. So we can pull this into our template, pop this at the top just here. And I'm just going to tidy this up just a little bit because the formatting is a little bit odd. So I'm going to change these two double quotes and I'm going to get rid of the type because we don't need that in there. So now we can set our body font. So the font family here is going to be railway and the fallback is going to be sans serif because it's a sans serif font. And if we automatically see here, this is looking a little bit better. So now, of course, what we need to do is style up our widget here just to look a little bit nicer. And this includes the drag and drop. So we want to improve the look of this as well uh, based on our application. So we are going to create a style for our upload care widget. And essentially, if you just right click and go ahead and bring up your inspection for this in your uh, elements part of your developer tools, you can see that we've got our upload widget class here and we've got all of the other classes. And this is how we uh, style an upload care button. So for the upload care widget, then we want this to be a width of 100 percent and we want to change the margin. We want 40 pixels on the top. We want zero on the left and right so we're going to say 20 pixels on the bottom so it's 40 20 on the bottom and then zero on the left and the right and we also want to style up our upload care 
widget button. Again, this is just the class uh, that upload care give to their widget button. And we want to set the font weight to maybe 600. And what we can actually do is we can modify this and pull in uh, another font weight as well. So all we do is we say 400 and 600 just at the end of this font style sheet. So we can do this over in app and we can just say 400 and 600. And if we just head over to our homepage, we can see that's already looking a lot better. So what we also want to do is sort out our drag and drop area. So if I drag this in now, you can see it's looking a little bit odd. So to get around this, what we can do is we can add a class for upload care widget drag n drop so drag and drop area and all we want to do is change the padding we're going to set this to 1m we're going to set the margin top to minus 2.3 m's and we're going to set the border radius which has a default border radius on it back to zero like so so now we should see when we hover over this looking a little bit better perfect so that is our actual upload care widget button star but when i go ahead and add an image and maybe crop it and do whatever i want we still have this horrible button just down here so we want to create a general button class which we can apply to any buttons and for this we're going to set a padding of 20 pixels on the top and bottom and 40 pixels on the left and the right we're going to create a border of zero we're going to inherit the font size so we're going to say inherit and we are going to set the font weight here to say 600 we're going to set the background color to a gray color like ccc we're going to set the foreground color to a slightly lighter color so 777 and we're going to set the cursor to a pointer so it actually looks like we can click on it because by default we don't see that so now when i upload an image hit done you can see once we apply that style so if we go to home and we give this a class of button go ahead and drag an image on hit done there we go so we've got a much nicer looking button we can click on this we've uploaded the image and it will eventually display here so we now have two images that we can go ahead and preview and notice this one i didn't crop so we don't have uh, these options for the upload care content delivery network so this is great we've got to the point now that we can actually upload an image but of course what we can't do is go ahead and display our images on here just yet now remember earlier we already created the query to pull in all of our images so really all we need to do is go ahead and pass these through to our view and pull these back and style them how we want. So let's jump over and do that in the next part.